Looks like we are live on Facebook. Sorry for all of you having to deal with my technical inability to perform really well in front of a crowd. <laughs> so Faisal, thank you so much for being here today inside this group. Now this group is all designed and focused on creating a peak result in not only in real estate, but in someone's life, because we, as we both know, this game is really, really challenging. It's even more challenging today than it's ever, ever been. So thank you for spending some time with us today. Thanks for having me on, Rich. And if you don't mind, I just want to share a little bit with our audience about who you are. So we have um, agents here in this group from the United States, all over Ontario, um, throughout Canada, and a few actually in Europe. So uh, I think it's important they know who you are and why we should pay attention to some of the gifts that you're going to give us today. So you've been around the game of real estate for a very, very long time. And um, most recently, I mean, you're ranked number one in Canada for REMAX and individual transactions, number two globally with REMAX and individual transactions. Um, you've done how many billions of business? We're up to 3.6 billion as of this year. $3.6 billion in terms of business and real estate is phenomenal. Thank you. So, um, and you have a, a release of a brand new book, The Real yes. Deal. Yes, yes. Came out uh, September of 2020. September of 2020. Yeah. And how has the book performed for you? Well, very well. I, uh, to my surprise, it hit uh, the Amazon bestseller list and uh, continues to stay in the top 100 uh, for real estate sales and marketing and investments. So quite excited about that. Yeah, getting some great feedback on that as well. Well, the reason why we want to have you on today Faisal, is that this game of real estate is probably the, one of the most challenging games I've ever seen in business. I mean, my background is as a financial planner, stockbroker, and that was a different business, the asset management business. Here in the real estate world, you have to wear so many different hats, so many hats. And what I'm seeing now inside this game of real estate, we have agents that are struggling, having a very, very hard time. And some of the questions that were posed to me because I want to be very cognizant of your time today, because we are in the peak of the market right now. If you don't mind sharing with us, what are the reasons, the top three reasons why you've been able to be such a stellar performer in this game when so many people fail? You know, it's interesting. Uh, I get asked that question quite a bit. Um, it, it's so important that we don't forget as agents all the stuff that we used to do when we started. So the basics, and that's where a lot of people divert their attention. You know, when they start moving along, they stop doing those things that help them get to where they are. They start reading their own news clippings and they get, you know, they get a little bit of an ego and they get this, you know, that's too good for me. I don't want to do leases. I don't want to do this. I don't want to. So that's where, so if you get back to basics, all those things that you did when you started that grind, that hustle, that, you know, not judging the book by its cover, dropping, you know, checking your ego at the door, having some humility and humbleness in everything you do. So bringing like a positive mindset and a, a work ethic, but also a heart set that aligns you to your people, the people that you're working with and, and not forgetting that, you know, you were um, them at one point when you were starting out and, and just to, to remember to always maintain that integrity and that ethics so that when you're, when you're working with someone that they can relate to you and they can resonate with what you're, what you're saying and doing with them. But in addition to that, keeping up with, technology, keeping like evolving with it. So, you know, I started in this business in 1988, uh, 33 years ago, and I'll tell you, uh, fax machines were technology back then. And like, you know, it's unbelievable what's happened. What we can do in minutes now used to take like hours to do uh just a simple sign back would be you get in your car and you drive 45 minutes to get a signature and then the initial and, and offer presentation you know it would go four or five hours so when you look at what is available to us now uh that's the they have become accustomed to be engaged with um you know door knocking phone calls cold calling and i know there's a lot of us that do that i personally have never done that and the reason i have never done that is because i don't appreciate it when i get those calls or somebody knocks on my door so i've 
taken a very uh, different approach, which is passive marketing, branding myself, aligning myself with my brand, making sure I become synonymous with the industry. So when people think about real estate, I'm top of mind. And that's the goal when you should, when you're starting in this business, don't be a ghost. Don't be in someone's shadow. Be at the forefront. Do it slowly. Start with a small marketing area, a farming area. And, you know, when I first started, I had a farming area of about 200 homes that I would just send regular flyers to. Um, and just working with that. And, you know, I didn't try to reinvent the wheel. Look at those people in this industry that are successful. Do what they do. Have them as mentors if you can. Learn from them and then model excellency creatively, not critically, creatively, and adapt it to who you are and how it fits to you. But the discipline is the most important part where consistency, you know, if you're going to start a flyer campaign or, or an email campaign or a newsletter campaign, don't do it for three months and say, okay, well, you know, I gave it a shot and it didn't work. I didn't get a single phone call. Um, I, my understanding is that people have to see your name 11 times before they're going to remember who you are. So, you know, you got to give it some time. I, at, at the, at the peak of my farming uh, marketing, I was sending out about 30,000 flyers every three weeks to my marketing area. Now I have shifted out of that because social media has become so prominent. So my database has now become social media. And that's where I engage with new buyers, new sellers, my past clients. And I personally do this. So that's one of my main focus is, is making sure that I'm engaged, that I'm available, that I'm there, that I'm not someone in the path, in, in the background. I'm at the forefront. So when you look at, um, let's talk about social media, for example. I see, I see a lot of agents trying to do TikTok videos and spending a, a lot of time, an incalculable number of time dancing. <laughs> and while that may get you some looks, it seems to me, based on what I'm seeing out there in the marketplace today, that may not be the best use of your time, creating dancing videos. And um, so when you look at the practical application of social media, are you taking your database and making sure that inside that database, you are spending some funds, making sure that wherever they go, there you are in terms of cookies, in terms of tags. Is that part of the process or am I, am I not hearing that properly? You know, it, it's, you want to, you're creating your brand. Right. Now, if, if people are too focused on how many likes am I getting? How many shares am I getting? How many comments am I getting? It's, I think it's more important to have the proper content as opposed to uh, frequency. Frequency is important. I, I, I'll post twice a day. Um, and I engage personally on my social media. I comment on my social media on a regular basis. I don't leave it up to an agency to do that. I do have someone that's doing my posting for me, but once it's posted, all the engagement that's going on, all the, all the communications that are going on are happening for me personally. That's what keeps me at the forefront relevant with that audience. Um, and as I mentioned, I took my entire database and I recommend this to everyone. Take your entire database, input it into Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn. Now, and, and remember, you have to, you have to set up your content. You can't put silly videos on LinkedIn. That doesn't work. You know? So if you're going to do that, yeah, do it on TikTok. Again, you want people to take you seriously, I hope. And I don't know if, and, and look, I'm not criticizing those that do it. In fact, I find them very entertaining, but I don't know if that's the right format in which you want to show your professionalism. Um, but you can do something that's entertaining and still be informative and relevant to that audience and engage with that. Um, you also have to judge the audience. You have to say, okay, what's my crowd? Who am I after? Am I, am I looking for that 18 to 25 year old crowd that's sitting on TikTok? Um, look, I, I'm I'm entertained by TikTok. My friends are constantly sending me TikTok videos, but I don't log on to TikTok and say, okay, what's, what's going on in the real estate world? So that's something. And again, I, 
I may be totally wrong on that. I find Instagram as my number one social media platform where I engage, I get the most traction, I get the best feedback. Facebook is also very good, but Facebook opens yourself up to a lot of different audiences, a lot of criticism. So you have to have a little bit of thick skin. I take a lot of heat, you know, I'll, I'll post um, above asking, but it's, it's from my perspective, it's information that I'm putting out there. But you know, I can, I can relate, you know, when you're saying, Oh, I just sold a house for $300,000 over asking that buyer who's frustrated, you're going to get a lot of an earful of hate that's going to come out of that buyer saying it's people like you that are causing people like me not to be able to buy a home. So, you know, this is very important that you, you, you read your audience before you start posting things. It sounds to me that you have to have very clear intent, not just mishmashing and throwing a bunch of stuff against the wall and hoping something will stick. Sounds like you're very intentional in why you, in what you're doing. It's not just, you know, I'm going to put some out there and hopefully someone will comment. I'm sure you still have an active lead generation campaign currently, right? Not just exposure, but is there an active name, phone number, and email acquisition strategy? Yes. Yeah, so I have, you know, so I, I've taken a very uh, scaled down approach. So, you know, a lot of times we as agents are trying to be everywhere all the time and, you know, we're trying to scale that up. So I've scaled it down. I talk about this in my book about scaling down and, and marketing in an area that you become the celebrity, you become the prominent figure uh, in your industry. So bus benches, billboards, bus bags, uh, you know, ice uh, rinks, arenas, like you name it. So I've got a, a large sort of audience um, and marketing format within my city, which is pr prominently in Cambridge um, and surrounding areas. And if you're driving in the city, chances are you're going to see something with my face on it and my phone number on it and my email and my contact on it. And that's just passive marketing. It's like sort of that, you know, the elevator music uh, in the elevator, it's sort of there, but you don't pay attention to it until you do. And that's what you want to be. You want to be in the background, but when somebody thinks about selling their home or buying a home, they're like, oh yeah, let me call the guy in the back of the bus right. or you call the guy on the bench. And that's, the marketing that I've been doing. In addition to that, I do have, uh, I do Google retarget marketing. I'm like, I sponsored ads on Facebook, on Instagram. So I'm doing that consistently. I have got a budget for that. I'm posting, you know, just solds. I'm posting the new listings, the coming soons, but I'm doing it consistently. If you go onto my Facebook or Instagram page, you will see that every day there is some level of content on there for buyers, for sellers, for just information. And, and again, you've got to balance that not all business. So, you know, you've got to allow, I, I like to have about 25 to 30% personal content and then have, because people want to see who you are, who is this person in behind that. So we can't get carried away with just all business business. You've got to, people need to be able to relate to you. And, and your comments are so important when, you know, little Johnny gets his first uh, uh, goal. It's important that I congratulate him when his mom or dad posts on Facebook or Instagram. And that's the type of engagement that's going to make you relatable to somebody. And I don't do it because just strictly for business. I'm genuinely doing it because I want to engage and that's my platform as opposed to sending an email drip campaign or a newsletter campaign because I find again are people really reading that stuff are they constantly but they will read your comment they will see that and I can engage daily with an audience of 6,000 clients because they're on my Facebook and Instagram every day they're seeing some piece of content from me and they're so I'm now top of mind recall so I've taken social media I got out of print media about eight years ago when no one was out of print media in fact when I got out the magazines were giving me free cover pages just to keep me in so the crowd wouldn't follow and also exit and um, now I'm finding that social media has become my number one marketing tool um on to any but you still do um billboards and some kind of content where people are driving around to see you Absolutely. So, and you're creating these lookalike audiences within the social media platforms so like attracts like right people who follow you they'll probably have a sphere of influence who will follow you as well exactly got it got it so i know inside this group we have some agents that are top half of top one percent in here we also have some agents who are striving to get to that level and maybe their budgets aren't as large 
um, and have not built their life into being able to not only do a deal, provide for their family, and then taking a percentage of that and apply it to the game. So if someone, maybe they've been in the game for three to five years and not spent any money on advertising, just really taking their time and trying to talk to their circle of influence, is there a budget that maybe you could recommend to them to spend to build their way into that level of advertising? I would say for the first 15 years that I was in this business, 20% of my gross earnings were going towards marketing. And I was doing that not only to maintain my existing business, but to grow. So I'm, and to this day, I'm not a referral only agent. I'm continuously trying to grow my business. So now at this point, I'm not spending 20% of my, my gross, but I am spending a large percentage of my gross towards marketing. But in the beginning, 20%. So uh, I would say, you know, if you're earning $300,000 and it seems like a lot of money, uh, to, to put $60,000 a year into marketing. But if you put in the right places, each year you're going to see your income increase and your cost decrease, which you know you could be down to 5% by the time that you really started building up your business. But that's the importance. Now, you know, and, I, and I use this uh, comparison quite often. You have to look at this industry as a business. You are basically, okay, you don't have the bricks and mortars and the inventory. So imagine if you open up a, a variety store, uh, you've got to stock the shelves. You've got to go and buy it. You've got to pay the inventory cost up front. You've got to pay for the interest on the on the loans that you've taken to stock your shelves or whatever it may be. We are in an, in an industry where we have billions of dollars of worth of inventory absolutely free so what you need to do is invest in your marketing because that's your overhead what other overhead do we have okay we've got gas we've got may have some office expenses and whatnot but it's so important that you look at this as a business and say i've virtually got my inventory for free here and i can earn this margin three percent four percent five percent margin on that inventory if i can just get people to ask me about that inventory. And how am I going to do that? I'm going to market that inventory. I'm going to market myself so that my phone rings. And that way I now can get a piece of that pie off of all of those listings. And it seems to me that in the beginning that a lot of agents aren't willing. Well, I don't know if they're not willing, but I don't still think their mindset is there to do it. Um, they're not willing to go out there and actually have multiple tens of multiples, 100 phone calls a day to get to the point of doing a deal, to get the money, to start advertising. They're not willing to do the work necessary. That seems to be a real issue. Some of the agents I work with, are tough. they're scared. They're kind of like those secret agents. They're not out there saying, listen, I don't have the funds, but I'm also not willing to go put myself out there and have multiple hours of conversations with people to do a deal so that they, I can then turn around and take that money and reinvest. Why do you think that is, it, that is? Why aren't these agents willing to do that? I think, you know, a lot of it is because they haven't been coached properly. They haven't got the right guidance. They haven't seen what those people who are successful in this business have done to get to where they are. Look, I go back to, I go back to when I started, I was 18 years old. Who wants to give an 18 year old a listing? Like you're younger than most of their kids. Right. But what did I do? Two years prior to that, I had a paper route. So I contacted my paper route. So you, again, you know, you go back to sphere of influence, right? I contacted my paper route and I said, hey, I'm a real estate agent now. Guess what? People wanted to give me business just because they were entertained by the fact that this kid who's still in high school is selling homes. They're like, okay, let's see what he's got to, got, got, got to do. But beyond that, Every, every one of us has a sphere of influence, be it uh, in my case, you know, being of South Asian origin, uh, I speak five different languages. So st like 33 years ago, there were a lot of new immigrants in this country. A lot of them didn't speak English. Um, I had that entire market where they could relate to me and I could relate to them being a first generation in this country as well, that I could relate to the, the the struggles that they were having and and the hardships that they were going through because my parents went through those same hardships. So, you know, that was my sphere of influence. So each of us, it might be, you know, it doesn't matter. You may have been in a different industry, whether you were in insurance or you were in car sales or you were working at a bank. You created 
alliances and and networks with those people why not let them know you're in the business and so it's it's not just about making that 100 phone calls it's about identifying you know i tell them people that are just getting into the business that are taking their courses right now that everyone they've ever come across add them to your database number one number two add them to your social media and start connecting with those people because they're going to be in a position to a give you business or b refer you to someone and that's how you start building up your business now when you get that business don't pocket that money look we're feast or famine this this happens and the, one of the things that i noticed in my industry is i would see all the top top people in this industry in my in my town do extremely well march april may june july august they would be vacationing they would be taking a break they would be spending the money they made and then they would come back in september and hustle for a little bit but then christmas was coming so they take it easy and then you know nothing's supposed to happen until march again so you know this is this was the environment that i saw happening around me what i did was i copied everything they were doing in those three months but i did it for 12 months 24 7 without a break without any uh easing up of marketing and that's what allowed me to gain market share and they were sort of looking at us said, how's this kid gaining so much market share in our industry because they stopped doing the things that they were supposed to do that created their their income in the first place is it fair to say that people come into the game and they think it's easy but they don't do what's necessary they buy the nice car they lease a really nice car they buy some nice clothes but they're not doing what needs to be done this is this, it doesn't come easy let's be honest like anyone who says this game is easy they're lying yeah, especially absolutely. if you're starting today yeah. now it's simple it's very simple business it is it is but you know it, part of it is you know I, I like to use the word entitlement you know like people are coming into this industry thinking you know that the magic solution is going to be their team leader their coach their broker you know, it's not, it's you, you're running, you know, you want a job, you want someone to, 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 to give you a task and then they pay you for it, then don't get into real estate. Like this is a business, you have to be self-motivated. Uh, you gotta be hungry uh, or like me scared uh, that how am I gonna, you know, make my next mortgage payment. And that's the fear sometimes that allows you to succeed, but you have to channel that in the right areas and you have to, look at it and say, look, I'm not entitled to anything. I don't have someone that's going to hand it to me. And I, and I, and I get it. And I mean, you know, in some cases people get into this business, I get probably three or four calls a week saying, Hey, can we join your team? Number one, I don't have a team for you to join. I have a referral network and I'm happy to help people and refer business to them, but I don't have a team where I can sit down and mentor them and, and work with them and feed them. But when you do have a team, it's like, they're like kids looking for their next lead or their next meal or whatever it may be. And that's where I have an issue. It's like, you know, you've, you can't come into this business with the mindset that someone's gonna hand it to you and you're just gonna, you know, be successful because they're gonna continue. You've gotta create a way, you've gotta forge your way into this industry and you've got to see what the most successful people are doing and then mimic that. There's, I, like, I didn't, there's nothing that I've done that I've created. I've just followed what others have been doing and I've modeled what others were doing. I did it creatively, I adapted it to me, and I did it consistently. So there, so this brings up a great part of the conversation for me. And I get excited here because I have clients that say to me, Rich, um, I don't want to bother people. How do you feel about that? Like, and I do, I have clients that are coaching clients that say, Rich, I don't want to bother people. Like, I shouldn't send this extra email out, or I shouldn't, you know, make that extra call. And I think differently surrounding that, but I'd love to hear your opinion about that. You know what? I'm probably in that band. I don't like to bother people. I don't like to call. I don't, like I said, I don't door knock. I don't call. I don't have an email drip campaign. Yeah. I contact my clients via email. So, yeah. you know, I'll send out, uh, and, I, and I'll, I still handwrite and mail on the anniversary of their of their of their purchase, uh, an anniversary card with a lottery ticket, hoping that they win. Um, I still send stuff to them, but I don't bother people by contacting them, calling them, emailing them on a regular basis because I don't appreciate that. So this is where the passive marketing comes in, and this is where I've thrown money at it. 
as right. opposed to time added. So you've got right. to make a decision. It's either going to be, I'm going to have a marketing campaign. I'm going to invest in my business monetarily, or I'm going to invest my time. I don't have the time or the want to sit on a phone for six hours a day making cold calls or go out there for three or four hours a day door knocking. So that's one of the reasons that I decided very early on, call it fear of rejection, whatever you want to call it. That just was not my thing. And that's why I never did it. But I, so in the beginning, my cold call or my door knock was my flyer in their mailbox. Right. And so you spent the, the money to be able to do that. Right. And exactly. then built your way over time. Exactly. If someone doesn't have the money though. Yes. They then, gotta, that's where they have to focus on their sphere of influence. Right. Right. And you still but have you to reach out. That pass- so social media is yeah. a passive way to do it without spending any money. Right. There's no money that you're spending on social media. If you, and you don't have to sponsor ads, but if you want to engage with a large audience and you can spend a little bit of money, you can go on a social media, do a sponsored ad, do it in a geographical area, do it in a demographic that you want to hit and just start popping up in their feeds, right? And that doesn't take a lot of, look, if somebody says, I don't want to spend any money, then get out of real estate. You're going to spend a lot of money to get there. You've, and I said this earlier, you're not buying inventory, you're buying marketing. And if you're not prepared to buy marketing, you're in the wrong industry. Thank you. Right. Thank you. And I think this is a a great segue into, you know, if you don't have the money, but you have the staying power, yes, you do have to reach out. You do have to full contact sport. And if you have to go through that to get the money to be able to, if you don't have anyone, you maybe don't have a spouse that works full time, when we came up to the area we were, we didn't know anyone, zero. We had to move very fast and create income very quickly in a short period of time. And so I, we just bought internet leads. Yeah. And we went at it and created a digital experience in the back end. But it was still marketing. I had to throw money and it was all done on credit because I didn't have any money. Yeah. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons that right. people choose to join a team, right? They choose to join a team because, okay, they don't have A, the money, they don't have the experience, all the excuses are out there. But, and again, I'm not speaking out against teams because I think there's, there's value in joining a team for, for those who want that system. Um, But you as a individual agent who made the decision to become an agent, do you want to be in someone's shadow or do you want to be the forefront? Do you want to be the leader or do you want to be the follower? And okay, for a short period of time. And that's where I found that the team model was not sustainable. And that's why I don't have a team because I don't think I can feed enough leads to someone. And I don't want someone with their hand out saying, where's my next lead? Um, so that's one of the reasons that I, so I, I created a referral network. And again, that's what I would suggest to first time a, uh, buyers or agents, sorry, coming into the market. Um, align yourself with agents who are in a position to give you leads. So, you know, you, you yeah, you can buy leads or you can, pay a referral to successful agents within your office, within your city to say, look, I'll take your buyers. I'll, I'll cover your holidays. I'll do whatever it is. Just pay me a referral for everything I'm doing for you. And that's another way to get some source of income coming while you're starting to grow your business. And I've had people throughout the last 15 years that have come on and they get to a point where they've reached um, enough business that they don't need to be taking my leads anymore. But I still buy leads. I still buy leads. And why do I do that? Because it's part of the market. So, you know, you've got to say, okay, do I, how much of that market share do you want? And how are you going to continuously grow your market share? You can't just say, I'm going to stick to one vehicle. Okay. So you're, you're open to testing different vehicles to see what works for you in a given market. Absolutely. Absolutely. I just had a message to come in and the, um, this person asks, what does your daily method of operation look like today? Like, how do you operate? So I'll, I'll tell you, I eat, sleep, breathe real estate. Like, you know, I'm so passionate about it. I, like I said, I'm over 30 years in, I still get excited about what I do each and every day. So the first thing that I do, well, I have three full-time assistants that are absolutely fantastic. They're not licensed. So they're doing everything, they're doing the feedback, follow-up marketing, keeping me on track. So I basically just show up on CMAs. I work with buyers and sellers and that's it. I don't do anything. I'm useless beyond that. So I'll tell you, but my daily, uh, 
sort of routine is to review all the feedback on my on my listings review all of my listings for accuracy making sure that things are being marketed in the way i want i still review all the ads that are going out i'm looking at the stats i'm looking at the engagement i'm looking at all of what's going on my so basically i'm looking at how is my operation running on a daily basis um every night before i go to sleep i do a few things i download and I, i'm sure everybody's got the same sort of system but i download the entire matrix hot sheet for my region i look at every listing i look at every sale um i'll look at historic sales i'll look at geo warehouse i'll look at everything that's happened in that day before i go to sleep before i put my head on my pillow i send probably three pages worth of emails to my office so when they come in in the morning they can execute and that's the important thing we all have thoughts that we are not executing if you can have and having an assistant is very important and i hugely encourage that and again it goes back to how much are you willing to invest into your business so for me having the three assistants just makes things work and they are there to execute what i can't so if I, if I drive by a sign um, of for sale by owner, uh, whatever it is, I want to make sure that I don't forget about it. Or I think about calling somebody, well, at midnight, it's too late for me to call them. But what I will do is I'll send a note to my office for them to remind me. So A, that way I can sleep without you know staying up all night thinking about it. And B, I know that tomorrow morning when I wake up, I'm going to have a task list that I have to do. My staff has a task list that they have to do. And at the end of the day, they're reporting back to me and letting me know, hey, we've completed all of this or this is still pending. So it's just staying, you know, keeping your finger on the pulse and making sure that you're staying in the loop because it's very easy to become complacent, right? You, you get busy, you let leads fall off on the floor. You, you're just not paying attention. I don't let anything fall on the floor because I've got three other people picking it all up and making sure they put it back on the table and say, you haven't responded to this. What do you want us to do with this? So it's just about discipline. Now, some people are very disciplined. They can do it themselves. I'm not. I need, I need reminders. I need people to make sure they keep me focused. And that's where I've aligned myself with a great group of individuals that keep me on track. It sounds like for me, when I hear you, so the way I hear this is that I would use this, the language of that you um, have assumed the spirit of being an agent. And that sounds a little bit esoteric, but for me, that means that you have zero doubt about what you do. You have zero doubt about what you're going to accomplish. You have zero doubt in the actions that you take every single day. And some of my clients, some of the agents that I speak with, they have doubt that their actions are going to produce a result. So is your faith, because this is a faith-based business now, meaning that you have to believe in the action, that the action will produce a result. Yes. Where did your belief in that come from? It took years. Okay. Okay. I'm not, I'm not going to say, yeah, all those things are true. Uh, they're true now but they weren't true probably for the first 15 years that I was in this business. I doubted everything I was doing. I imagine, you know, you've got an eight by eight poster of your face on the back of the bus. Right. It's not something that I ever imagined wanting to do or, and, and you know, am I getting a laughed at? Is it, is it silly? Right. Well, you're, you're, and, and then what happens? Your buddies are making fun of you. And it's like, Hey, you should be driving the bus. Why are you in the back of the bus? You know, all this type of stuff. So, it, you know, you get all of these comments and, you, and, and of course, you know, it's all funny, but there's, you know, you, you start doubting. It's like, oh, okay, is this silly? Should, look, and you know what, maybe like, you know, we, we talked about TikTok earlier. Maybe I'm totally wrong. Maybe those silly dances are good because, you know, who am I to say that they, they're not? Because I didn't know what was going to be good or not good. So again, you go back to, yes, so there's a lot of self-doubt, but it takes time and it takes successes to get confidence. And when you're feeling doubt, I go back on my past successes and say, you know what? Stop doubting yourself because it worked out in the past. So you just stay the course and it will work out. And, and it takes time. And it's, it's all about 
change and you know anthony robbins talks about this a lot right and 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 i'm a huge follower and my focus is always on changing that state how do i get out of that how do i stop feeling doubt negativity what do i need to do change my state in that moment and what do i do i go back to my previous successes and say you know what i doubted myself back then and it worked out so why wouldn't this work out so yeah you, you put it out there to the universe and you say it's all going to work out there were times that I didn't know if I was going to make, be able to make my car payment, my mortgage payment, you know, my, my, my office dues, my, my marketing bills, you know, we all have that, but you persevere and you say, no, you know what? I'm committed to this. I'm, I was 18 years old. I doubted every decision I made when I got into this business. I thought, you know, I should just go get a regular job and 1991 recession hit. Imagine, you know, I had my, my, my South Asian parents saying, see, we told you, so you should have gone to university. Now you're going to be a loser, you know, right? Right, right. But this is what happens. You know, I did some work with Tony Robbins as one of his results coaches, or trained to be one of his results coaches. And when you talk about that, that change of state, right, it, it's a real deal. So we created an avatar for ourselves, right? So I have my own avatar about who I have to be when I'm in work mode, Right. And we talk to our clients saying, you have to create something different within you to create a different result. If you don't forget it, you're out of the game, yeah. right? Yeah. And um, I just had another question here. And I know we may have kind of tapped in on this, but I think there's a lot of agents who've been in the game for a long time, but it's like they never started. Do you know what I mean? They've been here. They're kind of in the game. They pay their dues. And the, I've had three questions. What would you do right now? Faisal, right now, what would you do to start in the game if you were brand new? No money. Right now, I would start a business social media campaign, okay, okay. a program. I would go walk up and down the hallways of your office, yeah. knock on the doors of the most successful agents, yeah. and ask them to start giving you leads and that you will pay them for those leads. Two things are gonna happen. One, they're most likely, if they don't have a team already, they're gonna start giving you leads. And number two, you're going to create, you're gonna have a mentor, someone that you can bounce ideas off of, someone that can help you. The, then you're going to start researching people in your industry that are successful. And you know what you're gonna do? You're gonna call them and you're gonna ask them to meet with them. Successful people don't mind sharing. They'll sit down with you. They'll tell you. They're not, you know, insecure about what you're going to do or how you're going to take over. They will, they will. I've had a lot of people that have helped me. I've read a lot of books that have helped me. I've gone to a lot of coaches that have helped me. But again, it's just you asking. So that's the first thing that I think any agent needs to do is align themselves with the right people and ask for assistance and ask for the leads because they're not going to knock on your door and give them to you unless they ask. It's true. It's great advice. I really appreciate it. How do you see the rest of this year turning out inside the real estate market? I think we're going to have a lot of challenges on, you know, as buyers agents, we're going to have a lot of challenges. Um, as sellers uh, agents, we're going to have some challenges on commissions. And we're already getting challenged a lot on, you know, well, you know, how, how do you justify, you know, prices went up 35%. How do you justify still charging me 5% commission or whatever the commission rate is? And, you know, you've got to be ready. And the way you're ready is by having a solid marketing plan. You've got to be able to go in there. And, you know, we talked about, it doesn't matter what kind of day you're having. When you show up at a listing presentation, you got to be on. You, it's show business. It's show business. You've got to be on. Uh, you've got to leave there uh making them feel uh like a million bucks that you've just you're the only person that they should be dealing with because you've just given them the secret sauce of success and how you're going to get them the highest price but with buyers agents you know it's going to be a challenge there's no question because we have a lack of inventory um, and that's another reason why aligning yourself with the right people, the right mentors is going to be imperative because that's the guidance you're going to need. 
there's strategies, whether you're a buyer's agent or a seller's agent, that you can implement to help you get success. And there, there's, and you know, we could talk for a long time about that, but th that's so important that you learn the right strategies so that when you are in a bidding war situation, that you have the option that you're representing a yourself properly and b you're doing the right job for your clients. So it, it's it's going to be challenging, but I think it's going to be. Uh, for those who are committed, the, those who are doing the things that they're, and these are the times that, you know, it's not saying, oh, things are bad, you know, we can't get uh, buyers right now, we can't secure. These are the times to start really being consistent with your marketing and making sure at the forefront, and you're doing all the things, and you're aligning, you're planting those seeds, because there will be a time when inventory starts balancing out. And that, and that, that time, even if the buyers are not successful right now, they will be they're waiting when you're able to provide inventory for them. So I think it's just a matter of, again, getting your head right, getting your mindset and making sure that you're doing all the things and not giving up. In, in fact, in slower times or in times where um, things are not, because the masses stop. They're like, oh, there's no point looking for buyers right now. I got more buyers than I need. Well, continue your marketing. Start, keep building up that database and keep engaging and making sure to help them help them rent a place in the interim, right? And then convert those tenants into, into buyers later on. So you're not giving up on people, you're just helping them and you're maybe deferring uh, something that ha will happen down the road. It's great advice. The thing that I'm taking away from this conversation is that you gotta be all in the game. And I know that sounds so simple, but to be almost obsessive about the game, what's happening in your area? How many people did I communicate with today about buying or selling, whether it's on social media? How am I staying inside their circle, their emotional circle? And if I don't do that, someone else is going to take the throne. Someone else is going to do it better than me. So I have to be all in. And most this people- is, have... This is probably one of the best times to create your brand. Like to, to just, there's so many- different ways of creating your brand on so many different platforms. Look, you don't have to be on billboards and benches. You can create your brand. If TikTok's your thing, if Instagram's your thing, your face, create your brand there. Start your following, start engaging and be consistent. These are the times that you're going to really benefit from down the road. It's look, you're just planting seeds. You know, people say, oh, this guy's an overnight success. Yeah, overnight in 30 years. Like it's, there's no such thing as an overnight success. It takes time. It takes consistency. It takes struggles. It takes sweat. But if you are if you are disciplined, and you are all in, like you said, there is no stopping you from succeeding. It's great advice. Really appreciate it. I've taken forty six minutes of your busy day. We really appreciate it. This group is about trying to create a peak result in all areas of our life. And real estate will consume a big portion of our life. So we really appreciate the time. The best way to, what I'll do is below this video, I'll, I'll send out a note how people can reach you if they have any questions or if they have any referrals for um, your neck of the woods. Um, I'm sure that you will have some phone calls for this. Thank you very much, Faisal. And what's the best way to get your book, The Real Deal? Well, Amazon, amazon.ca, uh, Real Deal, Journey of a Billion Dollar Real Estate Agent. Uh, or reach out to me. We'll be happy to connect you. Thanks again, Faisal. Really appreciate your time and uh, have yourself an amazing year. Always a pleasure, Rich. Take care. Thank you. For those of you who are going to be watching this recording, we appreciate you taking the time. Share this message of awesomeness through your circle of influence, through other agents out there in the, in the community. Um, Faisal has gladly shared some of his time with us today. He's not getting paid to do this. Um, he's a great guy. This is the second time I've had the opportunity to record uh, an interview, Faisal. If you get a chance, we have a podcast out there that you can listen to him. This was done about a year and a half ago. He was one of the first people who agreed to do our podcast. And he's a wonderful guy. He treats his clients very well. So if you have the opportunity, Share this video with everyone out there. We really do genuinely want to serve each and every single one of you to the best of our ability. If you feel like you need a hand or if you just want to talk about what's happening in your particular business, don't hesitate to reach out to me at any time. We're trying our best to serve you, my peer, the real estate agent, and we want to help you perform at a very, very high level. So thanks again for spending some time with us. Have yourself an amazing day. and We look forward to connecting soon. Take care.